Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. If you're looking for news, tips, and stories about fishing the Great Lakes, you've come to the right place. And now your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. Joining us today is Captain Bob Songen from Real Excitement Charters out of Oak Orchard, New York. Thanks for joining the show today, Bob. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Bob, you've been fishing Lake Ontario for over 25 years. How has fishing changed since you started? <laughs> well, of course, it's changed. If anyone has noticed, it's changed drastically. Um, I basically started fishing for salmon back in the late, 70, late 70s. So I was lucky enough to hit what everyone called the heyday when, uh, when they were stocking 3 million salmon in the Lake Ontario. And uh, had a lot of good fishing back then. Uh, a lot, lot. I think the thing that's probably changed the most over the course of them years is uh, the fact that uh, we don't necessarily have as much fall staging fish, uh, salmon, king salmon wise, that we had in the past. Uh, I was always a proponent that, for the Caledonia hatchery, which is basically on the west end of Lake Ontario and uh, always gave us a better return. And uh, you know, over the years, I've been involved with the DEC with uh, focus groups for fish fishery management over the years. And of course, everybody knows over the years, the DEC has tried to adjust to what they believe was going on forage base wise. Um, I have not always been a proponent and agree with what they've said. If, if you talk to them, they will know that I have objected a number of times to what their plans were, but Overall, they've seemed to do, do a pretty good job. Uh, a lot of things have changed. Now, we have a, a much better spring fishery now for king salmon that we had in the past. Um, now, we put, typically get on salmon in May, and once we get on them in May, we're on them for the rest of the year. In the past, uh, early salmon and trout fishing, typically we targeted like brown trout in April, and we moved to steelhead in May. And uh, they had a mixture of lake trout, brown trout, and steelhead through July and really didn't start seeing uh, salmon showing up until mid-July through August. Now we get right on salmon right away and we're catching salmon through the whole season pretty much. What do you think has caused that change, Bob? Why, why do you think you have those fish there kind of all year round instead of having that, that big return later? I, th I think part of it... I think part of it is water clarity has changed um, and uh, that's had an effect on it. The lake, now that the lake's clear, the lake warms up differently than it did in the past. Uh, in the, earlier in the, in the late seventies and eighties, we had a lot of algae in the water all the way through the, through the winter. So we had a lot of good green colors. So that would absorb uh, energy from the sun and warm the lake up in a different pattern than what it's warming up now. Also, I believe a lot of the impact is the fact technology. I think technology has helped us become better fishermen. And, uh, and when people, and with that technology, that communication going up and down the lake, people get on salmon and uh, they pretty much follow them where they are. So people are able to access the fish more than they were in the past. I believe in the past, the fish were there. We just didn't know they were there. We just didn't know how to get on top of them and how to keep catching them. Now, like I said, now technology, especially the internet, cell phones have had a big Im impact on it. Have definitely changed the way we address the salmon fishery and how we, uh, how we successfully harvest our fish. You were talking forage base a little while ago. Tell me about how that's evolved and what, uh, as far as maybe total capacity and what you're seeing, but, the, the, forage, the forage base has changed in species as well. Uh, how has that kind of evolved over the last couple of decades? Well, uh, the water, you know, everything that we've seen as far as from the studies that DEC has done is that the forage base has diminished somewhat from what it was in the beginning. Don't forget, you know, Lake Ontario, before salmon were really stocked at a high level, was a pretty fertile, pretty fertile lake. Now that not that it's not now, but there was there was no top predator. There were just so many alewives in the lake that uh, if we had a an event, a weather event where the lake upwelled, 
We had dead elves all over the shoreline. The, the purpose of putting the salmon in was to control their population. So they put the, a number of fish in in the beginning, thinking that they would reach a level where they would have their population under control. And uh, of course, I, they believe that they overstocked a little bit. I personally don't believe that they did, but they do believe that DEC does believe that. And uh, you're going you're gonna to get a point where the fish are going to start going to accomplish what the DEC wanted to accomplish. What they wanted to accomplish was to manage that, that uh, forage base. And you would expect that forage base to diminish just from the predator prey ratio that was going to be out there. So we are never going to, I would believe we're never going to again see the amount of LYs in the lake that we saw in the past. But then I do believe there's going to be enough alewives out there in order to support a very good trophy salmon fishery in Lake Ontario. I Honestly, it's been years since I've seen an already over 40 pound fish and I don't expect to see an over 40 pound fish, but I do this expect to see what we are seeing a lot of nice class, healthy, high twenties to mid 30 pound fish. And that's from what I can see for Great Lakes, freshwater fishing. That's pretty exciting for people to be able to have an opportunity to catch. But uh, forage basis has its problems. Uh, cold winters do have an impact on it. Uh, we've had some warm winter, warm winters over the last couple of years. And that looks like there is being a rebound in the forage base from all the information that I've received at our focus group meetings with the DEC. And, uh, even this winter, I've looked at this winter as a very positive winter. Uh, they've had pretty much uh, the last time they could assess it, which they couldn't last year, they had uh, some pretty good uh, recruitment for yearling outwives into the population, which by now, from the 2019 surveys they did, are going to be adult outwives available to mature fish in this upcoming year. You do a lot of fishing out of Oak Orchard. The Oak is one of the most popular destinations on Lake Ontario. What makes the fishing so good at the Oak? What, a couple of things makes the fishing good at the Oak. One of the things is we have deep water fast. Um, out of Oak Orchard, you, and within seven, eight miles, you're in five, six on the foot of water, okay? Uh, that leaves, brings a lot, makes available a lot of cold water, which of course, trout and salmon species are a cold water species. So that makes that very available as far as uh, an area where the fish want to be. Other thing about it is um, Niagara River throws a hell of a current out there. I'm sure everybody knows that. But one of the major eddies that comes in off the Niagara River flow comes right in in the Oak Orchard area. And that, being, that Niagara River pumps a lot of further water into that lake. And that being said, from that further water, we get a lot a good warm up of energy from the sun. Of course, that starts the whole process. You get that good energy from the sun. You get the get the algae blooming. Then you get the the small organisms eating on the algae, and then the bait gets in on the algae and the, and the small organisms. And of course, the predator the Top predator fish are going to follow them. So that uh, that real further water, that number one, that cold water we get, and that further water that we get in from that major eddy off of the Niagara River is really the driving factor why Oak Orchard is such a prominent place, especially for summer salmon. You cannot beat Oak, the Oak Orchard area for summer salmon. You do a regular video fishing report on your Facebook page called At the Oak. You know, when I say regular, I mean regular. It looks like every two or three days during the season, you're putting videos up. What made you start doing that? Well, I'll try and give you the Reader's Digest history of that. Uh, years ago, when, when I probably the first 10 years or so when I was in this fishery, a good friend of mine who was my mentor, Joe Reefer, he was a fisher. He used to fish Michigan before we had anything on Lake Ontario. Uh, he, he, uh, me and he kind of retired from fishing. And then of course, all of a sudden, all these posting boards started showing up. Well, he turned me onto a posting board and every morning on Sunday, or not Sunday, on Monday morning, when I went to work, I'd go in a little bit early, get on my computer 
and I'd post a report on the posting board. Well, Joe, my buddy Joe Reefer, started, was following that board too, and me and him talked about it, and they decided to do a report called At the Oak because his wife Shirley was very computer literate, and uh, so me and Joe, me and Joe, and a couple other captains would contribute to the report. Shirley would write them up, and she posted them almost every day. Uh, so that was the beginning of At the Oak. Well, as time went on, you know, unfortunately. My good friend Joe is no longer with us and his wife isn't. And I look, I look for an opportunity to keep, keep their legacy going and keep giving people reports of what was going on at the Oak. And uh, Facebook came along and it kind of made it easy. Well, originally I did the, did the longhand ones. I did HTML one. And then when Facebook came along and video and, uh, capture came along, it was a lot easier just to do a video report. And, uh, Help, help the guys out. One of the beliefs, I will tell you this, one of the beliefs of the Oak Orchard area, especially the captains up there, is the more people that we can have come up and successfully fish at Oak Orchard, the better it is not for only our professional fishing businesses, but for the local lodging, the local bait tackle shops and everything up there. So my report kind of is focused to try to help the whole community uh, benefit from the fishery and not only that to give the guys that are coming up a good place to start fishing a good idea of what they may need to to have on the boat as far as baits in order to catch fish like we said we we at the oak always believe we want everyone to enjoy the fishery when they get there yeah that was actually my next question for a lot of people i think fishing is kind of a competition and sometimes they're competing with themselves. Sometimes they feel like they're competing with the fish. A lot of times they want to be the guy at the dock with the most fish in the cooler. Um, you're sharing some information that can help a lot of people catch fish. And, um, you know, maybe even those people are catching the fish that, that you might be able to put your clients on. So do you ever kind of, kind of think twice about putting these up or <laughs> anybody out there that kind of give you a hard time about giving this information away? Not necessarily, not really. I know. I, let's put it to you this way: I never think twice about it. ever, ever think twice about putting up the information. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, for us professional fishermen, wise, it's it can be a benefit. Now, you look at it from this perspective: a guy comes up here, brings his own boat, maybe stays at a lodging place up there three or four days. Now, not, not, he's not necessarily most of the time going to catch as many fish as I'm going to catch because I do it every day, but I still want him to have a good time. Now, he comes up, catches fish, goes home, says he saw the, my report. It helped him out. Goes home and said, people at Oak Orchard were great. They helped me out. We caught fish. We had a great time. Goes home and tells his buddy that. What if his buddy doesn't have a boat? What if his buddy wants to take advantage of that? What if the, the friend that told him doesn't have room on his boat to take him out? There's a good opportunity for that man to call me or one of the other charter captains at Oak Orchard and book a charter and bring more business to the port. So that's the perspective I look at that report from. That's, that's great stuff. What's the feedback been like for you? I mean, how many times do you get people that, that email you or, or catch up with you and say, hey, thanks so much for doing that. You know, it helped me on my trip. Uh, feedback is excellent. I get, uh, I get guys that email me. I get guys that, uh, that, that message me. Uh, some of them asking questions. Some, a lot of them asking where they, sometimes it's tough to get some of the baits that I'm showing. Okay. They're asking where they could get them. I you know most of the time try to point them in the direction. Uh, I meet a, believe me, I meet a lot of people, uh, up by the point at the launch, uh, they come up to me and walk up to me and say, hey, you're Bob Song. And I said, yes, I am. He says, thanks for your reports. They help me out all the time. I always tell them that's the focus. That's what we want to do. So I always get a lot of positive feedback. I get my some of my professional buddies rip me a little bit once in a while. But then if, if you look at some of the reports every once in a while, I'll throw them one of them, have them do a report and post it. So it's not necessarily always me. It's good to have a little change up and have another captain take the opp opportunity to put some information out there and get his face in front of the rest of the community. There's a lot of good things happening on Lake Ontario right now, but 
also some challenges. We talked a little bit about it earlier. Where do you see Lake Ontario in 25 years? 25 years, boy. <laughs> that's way out there, but I mean, yeah, you're really, a guy that's, that's seen a lot there. of change. Where, where do you think we're headed? Well, right now, the fisheries management with the DEC is trying to do their utmost best. Again, I don't agree with everything they do, and I'm vocal about it. And uh, But a lot of those guys are, are very focused on trying to do what they believe is best. Lake Ontario right now, when we have the right conditions, the natural reproduction of salmon is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. There's natural reproduction up of the Salmon River where the hatchery is. Uh, now that they have minimum water flows defined um, from the reservoir out, up there in the fall, they are producing a lot. Almost, they figure that times 50% of the salmon we catch in the lake are naturally reproduced from the Salmon River. We've proved that by the fact that we have a tagging trailer here in New York State, and they've actually fin clipped the fish and done studies, and they know it anywhere from 50 to 70% at times. Also, we know there's a number of very, uh, very uh, uh, good tributaries on the North Shore uh, of Lake Ontario that are also producing a good, good uh, uh, crop. Of, of salmon every year. I don't, let's put it this way. Salmon are in Lake Ontario to stay. No matter what, even if they stop stocking king salmon tomorrow, which of course we don't want them to do, okay? King salmon are there forever. They will be there forever, okay? The, th the biggest thing about stocking right now is the fact that coming out of the hatchery, we hope to get those fish imprinted on the ports that, they're stocked in, so they return to them ports. But as far as, as uh, things going on to, to, to the future, I'm, it's hard for me to predict 25 years. I'd be lucky if I'm still here 25 years. But I would say in the, in the short term, 10 to 15 years, I would say that we're still looking at a great fishery. There's going to be some, going to be probably some changes. There's definitely going to be some changes as far as where the fish are going to be because that, that's always going to change. There's years, weather-wise, that's, that's going to change on you. But I still see a good, strong fishery that hopefully the DEC, by stocking fish, is going to increase the opportunity as they hopefully, as time goes on here, start increasing stocking again now that our what we see as our uh, bay fish population starting to rebound to a better condition. Oh, it was good talking to you today. Is there something that you wanted to talk about today that I didn't ask you about? Actually, no, I think we, we probably hit, hit a lot of good things. Uh, People want now, to find now, out more about you and your charter service. How do they track you down? How do they track me? Well, uh, realexcitement.com is my website. My, I have a two web. I have two Facebook pages. I have real my real excitement Facebook page. Also, my personal Facebook page, Robert Songen. Uh, I, that's why I, I do the posts uh, on each one of them uh, uh, on each one of the pages because I have people that have liked the real excitement page. Uh, you can uh, my you can message me. You can text me. My phone number is on the, on my website. Uh, you could uh, send me an email uh, any way you want to do it. Uh, and don't, I honestly, if somebody really wants to get a hold of me, even if they're looking for some information, I've never, I will never not answer my phone. Okay. I may hang it up if it's somebody trying to sell me something, but if someone looking for <laughs> proficient information, then feel free to call me. I'll be happy to talk to them for a couple of minutes, give them an idea of what's going on, which has happened. I've had guys that watch my report. That uh, on the way up on a Friday night, call me Friday afternoon and say, Bob, is anything changed from your last report? And I usually update them if it has or it hasn't. Awesome. Yeah, check out those reports on, on Bob's Facebook page. They are awesome. If you want to know what's going on on Lake Ontario and specifically at the Oak, uh, check that out. Captain Bob Song from Real Excitement Charters, really appreciate you coming on today. Thanks, Chris. Good talking to you. And looking forward to doing it again in the future. Hopefully we can touch on Penware and, and its impact on Lake Ontario. Okay? Yes, sir. We will definitely do that. Okay. Thanks. Have Thank a great you, day. Sir.
Thanks for listening to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. For more information on fishing the Great Lakes, visit our blog at fishhawkelectronics.com.